Changing your PhD supervisor should be done with extreme care. It is an incredibly politically sensitive move and you need to make sure that you're not rushing into your decision. Throughout a PhD, loads of things go wrong. Uh, you start doubting yourself, you start wondering if this is the right path for you. But before you change your supervisors, there are some signs you can look for to make sure that it's actually the right decision. Because I think every PhD student at some time has considered changing their supervisor just because I think out of frustration, if nothing else, and not feeling like uh, they're fully supported and that the PhD sort of time is so turbulent anyway that sometimes it can be hard to work out whether or not it's your supervisor that's the issue or whether or not it's you that's the issue. This shouldn't be seen as a sneaky thing. This should be seen as communicating with your supervisor first about the issues that you're seeing, and if you can't resolve them, it's time to move on. But you do not want to get a reputation of someone who snuck behind your supervisor's back to leave. So, here they are. If you are deeply unhappy with your supervisor's academic conduct, you can leave. Now, these are things that not only sort of like span academia, but also mean that you don't have a very pleasant workplace. I have seen loads of really horrible things go down in academia. Some of them, I think, uh, are almost bordering on illegal. So, if you sort of see favoritism, um, extreme favoritism for no reason, then this could be a reason for you to sort of consider moving. If you're noticing that your supervisor is extremely biased towards a certain project, is spending far more time sort of nurturing another student um, than you, then you can actually move. And favoritism happens a lot in academia. So look out for that. Being weird with money is another thing that I've seen in academia. For example, I have known and this is a true story, that someone say, yeah, come on, be a PhD student, you will get X amount of dollars a year. And then they have gone six months without payment. And the promise is always, we'll get that soon. The money's on the way. And they have wasted six months of their life working for someone for free and that supervisor had no intention of ever paying that PhD super, uh, student. And then all of a sudden, you know, when they're like, oh, I want to leave, they're like, oh, actually, no, here's some money. So it happens. If they are weird with money, it's time to leave. Um, and toxic environments. If they are harboring an environment in their lab or their research group that is incredibly highly competitive, if they talk down to people in group meetings, if they are always about, you know, like shaming and uh, putting high pressure tactics on their PhD students, that is something that is a no deal for me and it should be a no deal for you too. Um, and unfortunately, it does happen more in the elite universities and programs from what I've heard. So that is a no deal for me and here's others. Supervisors go missing in action for unknown reasons. Maybe the academic stress got too much for them and they're just ignoring emails for a few months. There have been supervisors that I've worked under that have just been impossible to get hold of. And this is why I highly recommend to PhD students and people working under academics is to have co-supervisors on their team. If I had been relying on one supervisor in my past career, there would have been times where I would have just been waiting, sat, lost in the academic world for this person to reply to an email. I mean, there's things that you can always do, but sometimes you just need advice. You just need someone to point you in the right direction. If you don't have that at your fingertips, by an email at least, then it's probably time to consider moving to another um, academic supervisor or by taking on co-supervisors or speaking to people in the lab um, like uh, senior postdocs and asking them to take more of a supervisory role with you. And normally postdocs know what sort of beast the supervisor is, so they will be willing to help you. Um, it's unfortunate that that sort of information isn't publicly available before people make their decision to go with a particular supervisor a change in research interests. Now, as you're going through a PhD, you may just decide to go down a different avenue 
which takes you away from your primary supervisor's main skill and expertise. So you end up going down this avenue and you will start noticing your supervisor losing kind of, I guess, touch with your research project and not being able to guide you in the ways that you need to be guided. If you want, you can bring on co-supervisors or you can change your primary supervisor to someone else and have your old supervisor as a co-supervisor. That also works really well. And it's something that I did throughout my uh, PhD. I think it happened in the at the end of the first year. And so ultimately, if your research interests change, and your supervisor can no longer support you, it's time to look elsewhere. One of the biggest reasons I changed my supervisor in my second year of my PhD was a personality clash. For some reason, we drifted apart, which meant that I was the brunt of her academic frustration. And so what happened was I was sent to an intervention in the end of my first year because I was at risk of not finishing. When in fact it was my first year, I had a world record kind of solar cell in for those materials at the time. And I had no idea why this was happening. And so I went to this intervention meeting with all of my paperwork and evidence that I was on track. And uh, the dean of the school actually said, oh yeah, no, this is a personality clash. This happens quite often. Um, we'll just shift your primary supervisor to one of your co-supervisors. And uh, that worked really well. And I must say that that really did improve my PhD in the last couple of years. And also that my relationship with my primary, my ex-primary supervisor, my ex, it actually improved because I was no longer going to them first. And also they were so incredibly professional and still returned all of my drafts on time and it just made things better. So it is possible to have a good positive professional relationship after changing your supervisors. You've just got to do it the right way, all above board and speak to the people in charge, like the dean of the school, get the support and let your current supervisor know that it's not, you know, a, 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 a protest, that this is better for your research. Um, and there we are. So personality clash, it can happen. And it's surprisingly common, I think. Academics are these wandering, nomadic, clever people that just go wherever they need to to get the funding and prestige to continue their career. And so they will move universities at the drop of a hat. And uh, sometimes they will move with their research group and sometimes the people in their research group do not want to move with them. This is also true if they're retiring, obviously. If they're retiring and leaving altogether, then you definitely need to change your uh, principal supervisor. But ultimately, if they are moving to a new university and you do not want to go, you need to start looking at other opportunities within your department. And so uh, it can be incredibly challenging if your supervisor is looking for other opportunities. Now, really, it should be up to the supervisor to let their group know that that's what they're doing but it doesn't always happen like that. It's particularly dangerous time for supervisors leaving when they have just got some new money because with that new money, they have then got a bartering chip. They can go to other universities, more prestigious universities, say, hey, I've got all this money and I want to bring that to your university. And they go, oh yeah, bring it, yum, yum, yum. I love the, love the money. Um, so those are particularly sort of like dangerous times. Um, but if your supervisor is leaving and you don't want to move with them, it's time to start looking um, for other opportunities in your department because doing a PhD via distance is very difficult. I've seen that communication break down even you know in the same country a couple hours up the road. So it really has to um, be a primary supervisor in your current university where you're staying, but you can have a co-supervision um, deal and you can even visit the lab that they're moving to, you know, do a couple weeks of research there if you're still in the same research area. I've seen that happen as well. So uh, yeah, if there's movement and you don't wanna go, time to change your supervisor. So there we have it. There are all the reasons you should change your current PhD advisor. Let me know in the comments what you would add. And also, as always, go check out the two ways you can get more information from me. The first one is my newsletter. 
You can sign up at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So go check it out. And also Academia Insiders going off. I've got my two eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. I've got the blogs. I've got the forum. It's going off. It's to help you make the most of PhD and academia and to make academia work for you and not just your supervisor. So go check it out, academiainsider.com. All right, I'll see you in the next video.